folks. Today's the day. I'm going to be building my off-grid swamp cooler. I got all the parts. I just got to take and I got to get them all together. It's going to be a little bit of a build. Let me show you what I got. So I got this um, frame that you guys have seen. I also got a 100-watt uh, solar panel kit to run it. I got my fan in right here. It's a 12 inch fan. I got my pump in. I actually bought two pumps. Uh, one pumps a little bit more than the other one. I got my, my hardware cloth to go on here. We got the pads. So we got all the parts. Now I just got to put it together. So the very first thing I got to do, the way that the fabrication shop took and designed this, um, they designed it so I could take the bottom off, but really I need to be able to take the top off. And they, it's, it's put together the same way. They made a watertight tank down below the sides and then the top. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bend this around. And I've got to bend this out um, because this is the one that's going to have to come out. So we'll take that out. Um, right now I need it on there. We'll have to bend these out so we can slide them off, take the top off, and service the unit. So the next thing I got to do is I've got to put this hardware cloth on the outside of this. Now this is two foot wide which is exactly what our walk cooler frame is. We have to roll this out, measure it, and then cut it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this undone. Looks like they really meant business. They really got it wired together. So this is a, I could have got cheaper hardware cloth, to be honest with you. Um, this cost quite a bit, but this is vinyl coated, which really, to me, seemed like it made a lot of sense because I didn't want, um, I, did, I didn't want it rusting. Um, and, and we've got a lot of harsh metals out here in our, in our water, so. So we've got to roll it out and get it flat. Like I said, it's a little bit wider than what we need. So we're probably going to end up bending over a couple of these once we get the length. I don't want it interfering with this, so it's going to be a little shorter than that and a little bit narrower, and I'm going to bolt it to there. So I'm going to roll it out here and get it flattened out. And then we'll bend it to what our needs are. We're going to bolt that right on the outside of this. We 
want it to be as symmetrical as possible. Be centered in there. So I'm going to measure from this hole to this hole. And I'm going to center it on there. And then I'm going to measure from this hole to this hole and center it. And then repeat the process. holes marked I'm gonna put a find a small bolt out of my out of my bolt bucket I'm gonna drill a hole in there in those four corners stick a bolt through bolt it up mock it up for now and then I'm gonna repeat the process on the other three sides so I finally got my bolts for my uh, screen to go on here I had to go looking through my bolts found them Got a whole pile of them here. Now I've just got to get the uh, drill bit that's the same size. These are carriage bolts, which is going to help hold it on there. Um, the head's a little bigger. I got a big washer. I've got a good size nut that's going to go on the back. I'm going to take and find a bit this same size, drill my holes, get this screen on there. Pretty much all of the bolts that I use hardware or salvage projects where we have taken something apart, salvaged some material. That yellow bucket is where we toss them all. We hardly ever have to buy hardware or bolts. Generally just salvage them from different things that we do. So far, I think this is going to work really well. I'm going to take it, I'm going to repeat this process on the other two sides, and then I'm going to take it, I'm going to start working on the inside of it. I'm going to have to take pop this top off of here so that I can get to the inside and cut my evaporator pads and that sort of thing. So, this is the process that I'm going through. I'm kind of working and engineering it as I go. Uh, so, y'all just hang with me. There's no telling what it's liable to involve, evolve into. <laughs> okay, folks. Trip over something here. I got all my wire mesh on. And we're trying to decide what's the best way to attach our cooler pads, swamp cooler pads. But putting another mesh on the inside just does not make sense. We don't have the room in here uh, that I thought we were going to have. So my plumbing is going to go right here, and then my pad is going to be, show you on this side, my, my plumbing is going to be there, so my pad is going to be just a little bit lower than that, because it's going to be, I'm going to drill holes in that, and it's going to leak down my pad. So what I'm thinking about doing is maybe just using some zip strips here and here, maybe here, uh, maybe just to this, zip strip it a couple places, uh, and then zip strip the sides, possibly. Um, I've seen them used with zip strips before in some of these homemade swamp coolers. And I just don't think that it really needs a bolt to hold it in there. We're going to be changing them um, so we don't want to be taking and taking nuts off and bolts off and all that. When I got to thinking about it, I was going to put wire mesh on the inside and kind of crimp it around and fabricate it. But uh, I'm going to see how it does with just a zip strip. Uh, then we'll install our plumbing um, And I think that that's going to work a whole lot better it doesn't have to be all that stout to support the swamp cooler pad That's my next step is getting these cooler pads cut and then Getting them in position and zip stripping them in place
I really think that's all we're going to need to hold this up with our plumbing up here. I think it's going to work really well. Okay, folks, you're seeing this evolve as I'm working on it. Got my screens bolted in. I got them all tightened down. And we just decided to use zip strips to tighten it down. I still think it's going to soak in really nice. It's going to expand when it gets soaked with water. This one was a little bit tighter because of these two being already in there. So it, it's a little bit, probably I should have trimmed it down a little bit. Then to change it, all we have to do is just pop these zip strips, pull that pad out, put another pad in. When they get too much sand in them, we start noticing them getting dirty. These weren't too bad. These pads here were about seven bucks a piece. But so far, this is where we're at. Next step is we're going to put the plumbing in. Uh, the plumbing's going to run in here. Um, I'm probably going to put the plumbing up this side. Put an uh, a elbow, elbow, elbow end, and run the pump out of there. Uh, put it in the basket and everything, and then pump it up. So I'm going to kind of mock it up first, then take it back apart, put the holes in, uh, mount. I've got some strapping that I'm going to mount the tubing in here, and we're going to get this thing going. It's really, really coming together. Sometimes you have to take and evolve. Yet you have to take and evolve your um, your project as you're going. You have to change course. You have to learn on the fly, and that's kind of what we're doing here. I had one plan when I started, got another plan as I went. Okay, so I've got my pump. This is a 12 volt pump. It's a it's a marine sub pump is basically what it is, and I've got my three quarter inch. Uh, adapter on there because I'm going to go to half inch pipe, but I'm going to take it. I'm going to mock everything up. I'm going to have to take and cut a hole in my uh, little tray here. This keeps junk out of my pump. I had an awfully good supper, awfully good lunch. All the other homemade swamp coolers I had found used PVC and I decided to go with black plastic and barbed fittings. It just makes installation easier if I have to replace something and just so happens because I messed up on my size of holes and the number of holes that I placed in the tubing, I did have to take and go back and change the the piping so this made it real easy one good trick you can use if you're putting these fittings together uh, is use a propane torch just heat the pipe up they slide on the fittings really well uh, saves you a lot of sweat and toil right here is where I made my mistake and really put too many holes and too big a holes in my piping I thought my pump uh, would do better than it did all right I got all my plumbing in my camera shut off so I'm not sure exactly what I got there's my pump down here in the bottom it's kind of suspended which is not going to hurt it much get some water in that it's help it I got my holes drilled all along the bottoms right here it may miss it a little bit I got it on fire right here when I cut that bolt off of that grinder. But all in all, all the plumbing's in. Now I just gotta cut a hole for my fan. And right now, I mean, I could hook that pump up. I could put some water in there, hook that pump up, and we'll see if it do something. But I wanna get my fan positioned, get my hole cut out, and then See if they both work together. I'm going to position my fan and see about getting a hole cut in there for the fan. Alrighty. So, I need to know the exact center. Uh, 
of my fan. And it comes pre-drilled with some holes. And I want to get it as high as I can. A lot of these things I included that are just some kind of mundane drilling holes and that sort of thing. I hope it doesn't get too boring. Just kind of shows the process of what I went through. All right, guys, I'm about tarred. I'm on a, I got my hole, my holes drilled. I hung my uh, fan on there. I've got to cut it out. Just taking some last minute measurements. Uh, I've got to make a, a vent that comes off of this and goes into the trailer. So I've got to fabricate that. I'll probably just go back to uh, Farmington Heating and Plumbing Metal Shop and have them build it for me. I know how big my window is. I'm gonna have to take my window out and I'll probably put the controls through this side make the whole thing as big as it needs to be kind of put a front on it so I'm, I'm pretty tired um, I've worked at this just about all day I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put all my tools up I'm gonna break you out again tomorrow uh, and try to finish this thing up because I'm tired all right guys day two of the swamp cooler build um, this took longer than I thought it was going to had a little bit of trouble yesterday finding bolts. That kind of stuff just takes up time. Um, I'm gonna take this top off. I've already pulled one side off, but I wanted to kind of show you guys how I kind of pull it off. I just take a claw hammer, get in behind it here, and then just pull this track off. And then this top comes right off again just like that so now I can access this down in here I've got to cut my hole out today and yesterday I used a grinder and kind of melted one of my pads so I really want to take it probably just drill a hole in here and then cut it into like a pie shape and then cut it out because I don't want to melt my pads anymore. So I gave up on the pin snips. I got this side shielded. I'll shield that side when I get over there, but I figured throwing a shield over it was better than doing that. Okay, folks I got it all rewired got my fan put on here correctly it's on the outside now I haven't got these tightened all the way up yet just want to make sure everything's good I'm gonna hook it up see how this pump's gonna do so Pump's running water good, except to right over here. I'm 
thinking that I've got too big a holes in my piping. And I may have to take and change these tubes. I think my tubes are too, got too many holes in them. Either that or I need to get a bigger pump. And I'm not sure a bigger pump would help. Maybe go every inch with a smaller diameter hole because I'm dripping to right here. But then on around here, I got nothing coming out here. So it runs out of pressure. So I think I'm gonna have to get some more hose. How bad I hate taking those hoses, Luke. But I'm gonna have to get some hose. Didn't cost that much. You live and learn for sure. But it's blowing good. You can feel it sucking air through. But we're not getting any water pressure over here. Just to about right here. It's dripping here. So I think we probably got too many holes in this. So I'm going to have to head back over to Lowe's and get one, two, three. In fact, I may have a short, short piece of hose that I can take and put in here and change this one. I'll see. But the pump's working. It's just running right now off of a 12 volt battery. It's blowing quite a bit of air. Once I get my shroud on there, I think that'll blow plenty of cold air. Into the house. Right now, the temperature's reading 100 degrees. And that's in the, in the sunshine. So we're gonna hook this up. I don't know if my battery's gonna hold out. I may have to turn the car around, but we're gonna hook it up and see what kind of, we just got about two sides that are actually pulling uh, water. So let's see what we got. It's already dropped it. If you guys can see that. It's dropped at 10 degrees. Still dropping. It's dropped it. It's dropped it almost 20 degrees. Now that's right there at the at the fan, of course but I think it's still gonna drop some more. And there again, we don't have that one side pulling water. Um, I'm gonna have to change that pipe. 75 and going down. This is the only thermometer I have, so. It's the one we measure our temperature in our tent with. So compared to the 100 degrees it was, it's dropped it down to about 71, 71 degrees, 72 degrees, maybe. So almost 30 degree difference, 27 degree difference. So it's pretty nice. All right, folks, I changed my tubes out, and I have got water running everywhere, all the way around. It does leak a little bit of water when it first starts up, and the pads are not full. But once pads get full, it does a really good job. I got one just leaking here. It's because I drilled the hole wrong. But blowing good it's working good blowing cool air I ain't got the lid on it yet but it's working doing what it's supposed to be doing so on this build I learned a few things that I'll do different next time and I'll probably build another one or two
pretty fun little project. Well, thank you all for stopping by. Appreciate you guys checking out this premiere and this off-grid solar uh, swamp cooler. Remember to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about us. And until next time, we'll see you down the road.